Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're going to be setting up a um, Kali Linux virtual machine on Proxmox. First of all, we're going to kind of talk about the setup here. So this is running on my Proxmox cluster. This is a cluster I have across three hosts, um, totaling about 220 gigabytes of RAM, 62-ish terabytes, give or take a little bit, um, and about 64 CPU cores. So it's a rather large cluster. I'm using Ceph for my storage, and it has been a super reliable cluster. So I'm going to create this VM, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Kali Linux. So let's get started here. This is somewhat a Proxmox tutorial. This is also somewhat a Kali Linux tutorial. I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, but the first part of this video is going to be setting up on Proxmox. The second part is going to be actually setting up Kali Linux. So here we go on the resource pool. Um, this is not something that I just have set up. I guess it's just groupings of virtual machines. I have them for different applications in different customers slash clients or whatever. Um, for the name, we're going to just name this um, Kali Demo. Uh, if we go next here, um, you're, you can choose your ISO storage. So in my case, I just have, um, we're gonna select local for my storage and we're gonna give it the Kali Linux image. So the thing is here with your storage, what I have for my cluster at least is every single host has its own um, internal SSD and on the SSD is where I store ISOs and that kind of stuff and that's where the host boots from um, and then the hosts also have an additional three to four I think SSDs that are about a terabyte each and that's what the Ceph cluster runs from. I'm just using my separate SSD on the host um, to get my ISO. If you go to system, I like to switch this to Q35. It gives you, um, I think it's more reliable in my opinion. Um, I also think that it works a little bit better in terms of how it's virtualized and that kind of stuff. Um, when I was back on my like Linux VMs a while ago, I found that Q35 was a lot easier to migrate between systems and virtual environments. So I prefer Q35. We go over here to disks. As you can see, it's using my Ceph storage here. Uh, this is going to have a 64 terabyte disk, I'm gonna say, um, and the bandwidth or anything else on this page does not matter. If you go to CPU cores for a virtual machine that has like graphics on it, I usually give it more cores just because I don't have any graphics cards or anything that I can pass through to it. So um, I'll give it probably four cores and that should be plenty. If we go to memory, uh, this is in megabytes. So you just multiply whatever number of gigabytes you want uh, by 1024. So I'm going to say 8192. And I'm going to give it, so that's 8 gigabytes of RAM. If we go over here to network, I'm going to give it VLAN 933. Um, and for the record, slash in case you need to know, um, the bridge here is this VMBR0. I have the same interface name across all three of my hosts. And it is a bond of two aggregated links. Um, that are 10 gigs each so each server has two 10 gig connections to two different switches um, with two different uplinks so it's a pretty reliable setup every virtual machine i guess can fail over between different connections different network connections um, and it's just it's it's great um, i also like to turn off the firewall i know like you might want to have the firewall on but i would encourage you to do the firewall inside of the virtual machine itself i realize the centralized management of proxmox may be nice to use um, and have your firewall on there, but I personally prefer to do it on a VM basis, just because if I'm connected to a VM over SSH or something, I want to be able to manage the firewall on there through UFW, but that's obviously totally up to you. Model doesn't matter, MAC address doesn't matter, confirm. This is just going to go over all of our settings here. So this is ID number 140, um, and pool is BN or Beam Networks. VLAN is tagged to 933, it's using this ISO of Kali Linux. Everything looks good. I'm going to check the start after created and I'm going to click finish. So it's going to go through and I think it's just going to use the host, the host with the lowest ID number, which in my case is one. So I'm pretty sure it's making it on there. If we go to virtual machines on the side, I apologize, but I have to blur this out. I'm going to go over to my Kali demo and we are going to see what happens. So if we go over here to console, we should see, yep. So it's asking us to do the graphical install we're going to do. So this is the portion of the video where we're going to install Kali Linux. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to um, hopefully do my best to explain these setup instructions. It gets a little odd in a few spots, but um, we'll get through it. English, United States, yes, yes, yes. American English, that's fine. Um, and sometimes this installation does take quite a long time, so this video is going to have to get stretched out. I don't know why it takes forever on Proxmox, but I found that Kali Linux can take up to a couple hours um, during the installation. Um, I don't know if it's the network I'm putting it on or what the case may be, but um, it does seem to take a while for me. So 
just keep that in mind if I have to jump around in this video. It's just because um, something in my setup is slow and it's causing Kali to take forever. Um, okay, so the host name for the system, we're going to give it um, just Kali Demo. I usually like to match my host names to what I call it on Proxmox, but it really doesn't matter. We're going to continue. Domain name. So if you have a DNS domain name on your network or a search domain, you could just fill that in. Um, a lot of organizations might have like um, local dot their organization or whatever. Um, I don't have that set up, so we don't need that. We can continue. Full name for the new user. We're going to make a user for Beam Networks here. Just like so. This is username, so that was a full name. Now we're onto the username. Continue. Password. I would make this secure, um, depending on what you're doing on Kelly. Uh, you may become a high target for um, attacks, so I would make you. I would make a very secure password. Okay, so it's going. It's asking us how we want to partition the disks. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to use the entire disk. If you wanted to encrypt your Kali Linux, which I would encourage you to do, I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video. I would highly recommend you using LVM encryption here, and you can actually decrypt that through the TPM chip. Um, so if we go back to the Proxmox setup, there's a toggle. In the settings that you can use the TPM chip, you can virtualize a TPM chip, and that'll give you um, access to decrypt your LVM disk um, through the TPM chip. So you're you're essentially encrypting all of your data on that disk and decrypting it through the TPM chip, which only lives on that Proxmox on that Proxmox host. So if you ever migrate your VM to a different cluster, or whatever, you have to redo the encryption. But um, it it makes for a lot more of a secure setup. I would highly encourage that. Um, but like I said, we're just going to use the guided partition in this video. So we're going to continue, and we're going to select our disk. It says 68.7 gigabytes. It always like overshoots it a little bit. We're going to click continue, and we're going to put all of our files in one partition on the drive. That's totally fine. Um, and now it's just asking us to confirm it. Now, if you wanted to do um, LVM, if you want to do anything with LVM, encrypted volumes, or iSCSI, um, you could do that here, or as well as software RAID. Um, you can also do all of that stuff here, but... Um, we're just going to finish our changes here. You could totally like do software raid on your disks and have redundant disks for your um, Kali setup, but for me it doesn't really matter. Um, yes, I do want to write the changes to the disks. It's just confirming everything once again. And one more thing on that partitioning. Um, the reason I don't want to do software raid, I totally could, um, but in my setup at least, since I have so many um, VM hosts and I have so many um, SSDs and stuff, I actually use Ceph to do all of my RAID array, essentially. Um, so I don't need to do any form of redundancy in terms of data protection on the drives themselves or the VMs that I run. Um, I have backup jobs in Proxmox that automatically sync my data to Azure and back me up. So um, yeah, I don't. it's not really necessary for me to have software RAID on any of my virtual machines, but I can see why you'd want to if you have a bare metal install of Kali Linux. Um, you totally could do something like that. Um, but at the same time, you could also just do a hardware raid if you had a raid controller on your server. So it's really just up to your preference, what you prefer. Um, but like I said, it doesn't necessarily matter. I believe this part does take quite a long time, so we'll come back once this is done. If we take a look here, we have all of the um, desktop interface settings and stuff that we're going to want. I would highly recommend you um, check the box for GNOME. I think GNOME is a pretty good interface, or GNOME, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Um, but this is what I would select. These are all of the settings I would follow. This installer always looks the same, so um, it should be the same when you're doing this installation. So let's continue here. This is the part, yeah, that takes quite a long time. It's got to retrieve like 3,000 files. So um, it's got to retrieve them, download them, install them. So it's going to take quite a bit, um, but we'll be back as soon as that is done. Okay, so at this point, we're going to select GDM3 as our graphics interface. I don't remember, I think there's like one that, I think that's the one that I normally use. I will put it on the screen once I know for sure, but um, I'm gonna select GDM3 as the interface. Okay, so now that the installation is complete for all those packages that it was downloading, we're going to select yes so we can install the Grub bootloader. This is just going to ensure that the VM boots as expected. And we're going to install this to the dev SDA drive, which is just the main drive on the Kali VM. Okay, so now it says that the installation is complete and you can continue to reboot. And this is going to reboot and boot into the Kali Linux that has been installed on the virtualized drive. Okay, so we can select Kali GNU Linux. And here we are on the login screen. This is our user account that we have made previously. 
we're going to enter in our password here and now we are in um, but yeah that is about it for this video there's all kinds of tools built on the Kali which is why the installation takes forever um, but it's a very useful operating system I really do enjoy Kali it's a lot of fun um, if you have any questions leave a comment down below but that is all thank you for watching this video have a great day I will see you in the next video